All right, today we're back in the 2023 Toyota Supra. We are in a three liter premium, six speed manual. I'm here with Substitute Topher. Hi. We've been driving this all week. Yes, we we've have. We've got some actually pretty good back roads for you today. Uh, we've driven away from our usual Michigan entrance and exit ramps and found some pretty good driving out here in Hawking Hills area in Ohio. So we're gonna be driving this today, talk about what it's been like to live with and road trip and experience this week. Really quickly, let's walk you around this. And we've done so many Supra videos. We'll just go over the basics. This one is painted in stratosphere blue. I think this is the best color combination. Yeah, when I saw this a couple days ago for the first time, I was like, this is my new favorite color. It looks Supra. really it's good. Stunning. Especially with these wheels. Yeah, they're not quite black. They're kind of a matte finish, shiny, dark, dark, dark gray. And we have carbon fiber mirror caps. Sorry, apologies. This thing is absolutely filthy because we've been we driving been it. Kind to it. We haven't been yeah. kind to the, uh, I mean, we've been driving in the rain. It's been pretty yeah. messy the last couple days. And we've put probably about four or 500 miles on it so far on this road trip. Michelin Pilot Super Sports 275s in the back. And what was up front? 255s. 255s. Yep. So not that big of a difference front to rear. No button to pop the rear trunk. You have to use the fob, which is a bit strange. You get used to it though. A decent amount of trunk space back here. We're able to fit plenty of groceries, bags, and you get these kind of fast and furious 2000 style speaker grills that look like rims. I had to throw that in there. Had to throw that in there, yeah, of course. It's great. Right without it. This pops up even higher if you want some more vertical height to load stuff in. I almost wonder if they've retuned this JBL because it sounds better oh. than the earlier Supras. We might do a quick sound system yeah. test. Exhaust sounds great. They've revised the suspension on this on these newer cars too. I don't know when they quite made those changes, but it's a lot more planted, a lot less tail happy. Really quite confidence inspiring out here these last couple days. The only time it was a bit sketchy was in the wet when I first got the car back in Michigan, it was cold out, 35, 40 degrees, and it was just pouring rain. Otherwise though, this has had pretty good grip in the wet yeah. the last couple days on yeah. these back roads. There is a ton of power here. This thing is just so fast. It's so fast, yeah. It definitely doesn't feel as fast as the automatic car because that ZF8 speed just snaps the gear changes off, but yeah. it's quite satisfying to drive. Let's go drive it. It's a very different experience from the automatic Supra with the yeah. eight speed. It is crazy how different it is. Like everything with that ZF8 speed drives similarly. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to have something different with the B58 because this is the only manual B58 car at that's this right. point. That's all that's left. Yeah. Yep. Such a good engine. Sounds awesome. It does. I think, I think this sounds better than the S58. It does. It's less ear piercing. Yeah. Yeah. It's got it's, a little bit of a lower pitch. It just sounds like a proper Supra. All right, we're going to get off this little dirt driveway here and we'll pick it up on some proper driving roads. All right, we're in sport mode. Suspension is set to normal, so it's a little bit softer. We could probably ramp that up today. We have some rougher roads out here and it is dry now. So you go in, let's see here, where's your setting? Your sport individual damping let's do sport and engine is sport and we have rev matching gear shift assistant on we'll play around with that a little bit this week see what kind of a difference it makes immediately this shifter it's different from traditional BMW shifters. It's different from the M2, it's different from the M3 shifters. It's a little bit less rubbery, a little bit, but more resistance kind of between gates. Yeah. I'm not sure how much better it is, maybe slightly better. It's, it's slightly just different. Better. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's slightly less gummy than a BMW shifter. That's a great shifter. way to say it, yeah. yeah. Not quite as tight and precise as the GR Corolla. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like a hybrid. It's, it's in between, yeah. It's, it's kind between. of in between yeah, yeah. the notchiness of the GR Corolla and the the rubberiness of the BMW shifters that we've come to know and 
sometimes love, sometimes hate. Yeah. We're in a, what is this? A covered bridge. Yes. Uh, yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah. Love to see it. Quite a bit of rev hang at first. But once you get going, <laughs> this is a third gear car all day long. Yeah. It just loves to sit in third and there's just torque for days. Do you remember if we went right or left? That way. We go left, yeah. Okay. Clutch is easy to modulate. Smooth starts in this are a cinch. You do have to be kind of patient with the gear changes because there is a bit of time that it takes for those revs to drop between shifts. And there is just torque everywhere. The power here, what's this rated for? 382. 382. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 3 2 at the wheels, maybe. Yeah. Maybe 400, I don't know. It feels like an S400 wheel horsepower, yeah, yeah all day. Ah, it's just so quick. And you get some little subtle pops from the exhaust on the overrun. Yeah. They're subtle at low reps, but they're... Yeah. They're not subtle at high reps. No, they're not. <laughs> and they're pretty loud outside, because there's a lot of sound insulation in this car. Yeah, when I was driving behind you in the Civic Type R yesterday, I could hear it. I could hear the pops loud and clear. Steering is good. Really fast ratio. Just cruising around, this has been an excellent road trip car. How was it on the way out? It was a lot more comfortable than I thought. Uh, when I initially got into it, and this is the same as when I get into any Supra, is you forget how claustrophobic it is in the cabin because it's everything's small. dark. Yeah. And it's just like a pod around you. But I got used to it after 20, 30 minutes. And I mean, there wasn't really anything about it that I disliked. You lack a lot of the driver aids that I like to have for road trips. But I, you can't knock a car like this for not having driver aids. It just doesn't feel right. Sure. So, I mean, yeah, you don't have adaptive cruise control. You don't have lane yeah. centering, all that stuff. It does have cruise control, which is good. Um, but that's, yeah. that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it was good. It's cozy. The ride's great. It's quiet. This, the like I said earlier, the the JBL sounds pretty good. I don't know if they retuned it or if I've just driven enough other like competitors in this class to compare it um, for the for the the room that they have in here, the real estate. It's 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 pretty dang good. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, once you take this out of sport mode, it really quiets down nicely. The ride is very soft and normal. And you got about. 29, 28 miles to the gallon in this? About 28. Yeah. 28, okay. Right here. Yeah, slightly skewed because I think you did like 30 miles of spirit in driving. Yeah, I, I drove it pretty hard for so a little bit in Michigan. When I was looking at the instant, it was uh, closer to 30. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, these these B58 cars, cars are so efficient. They just they just eat up the miles. And, uh, we tested an M340i and it got like 34 mpg on the highway or something crazy. Have you done a fuel economy test on one of these? Charlie probably has. I okay. haven't. You probably got mid to low 30s yeah. or something. Yeah. All right, let's take it through the gears. It's pretty easy to drag that clutch <laughs> between shifts. Pedals are beautifully placed though for heel toe. Rev matching those downshifts is pretty easy. And it does a nice job on its own. Oh, the grip is insane. <laughs> also kind of forgotten what it feels like to drive on summer tires. Yeah. We're on a set of Pilot Super Sports, which dates this car a little bit. But you know what? I actually kind of like the Super Sport a little bit more than the Pilot Sport 4S. It's quieter, and it still has tons of traction in the dry and the wet. No complaints about this tire.
turn in is so sharp. There's a ton of grip from this front end. And my favorite thing about the manual transmission in the Supra versus the auto is that you can just control the sound and the noise that this thing makes. Mm -hmm. You leave it in gear, you let it rev out, you're not always shifting. Yeah, two less gears. Two less gears, and there's so much torque that you can just leave it in third or leave it in fourth and let it do its thing. It's not like the GR86 where you want to always be changing gear, and the gearing's way longer than the GR86 and the GR Corolla in the Supra, so you're staying in the same gear a lot, but that's kind of fun. The six-speed doesn't like to be rushed. Fourth and fifth are pretty close ratio. They are. driving BMW now. Yes. With a manual. Yeah. We haven't released the M2 video yet, but we probably will by the time this goes up. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And it seemed like, Charlie went on that drive. Yeah. And it seemed like it was just a slightly lighter, but not by much, slightly smaller, slightly less expensive M4. Mm -hmm. And it kind of lost that special flavor, that special fizz that the M2 has always had. And I think the Supra, yeah. you can deal with just a dedicated two-seater. This is the ticket. This is the car. Yeah, a lot of the S58 cars have just kind of lost their charm because they're just, they're so hardcore. And they're just like, uh, the way Charlie puts it, they're like soulless missiles because they're, they're yeah. so fast. But This is a missile, but it has some character to this it. This has character. Yeah. Yeah. I love the chassis. I love the handling of the Supra. It's so sharp, and it's just a little bit more approachable. Like, we're not driving very fast here, no. but it's still exciting. It's still engaging. I, I, I'm getting some feedback from the road through the steering. It's also a bit of a challenge to drive this manual transmission, which in its own right is engaging and is kind of exciting yes. because when you get it right, it feels that much more satisfying to drive. Yes. Yeah, I've been working on that, on that the past couple of days because you get in something like a GR Corolla and it's just easy. It's but so easy, yeah. Yeah, this, this car is definitely a little bit more challenging. It takes some finesse, it takes some patience. Yes. But when driven with finesse and driven with some patience. It's quite good. It's quite smooth. You get into a rhythm with it. I love the noise this makes. Even though there's a little bit of piped-in engine sound, I think it's convincing. It sounds 
like how you think a Supra would sound. Yes. Yeah, I've got to be honest. At first, when I started driving this this week, I wasn't completely sold on the manual. Yeah. But the more time I've spent with it, the more it's grown on me. And I think if I were to get a Supra, I would get the manual. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is what we've wanted. And we finally got it. Yes. And it's it's good. It's about what I expected. Yeah, with what they had and with this platform, I think this is just about perfect. Yeah. And these things are so fast on track. I'd say if you want the fastest Supra, get the auto. You want the most enjoyable to drive Supra, this manual. It takes the cake. Of course, I've got to ask myself, is it as fun to drive as the BRZ? Oh, there you go. There it is. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> it makes the BRZ GR86 seem very slow, that's for sure. Yeah. But that's about it. Otherwise, the GR86 is more fun to change gear, more fun to shift. It's more, in, more fun to flick. More fun to flick around. Yeah. It's a much more approachable car. I mean, the limits in the Supra are just so high. You really have to be a crazy person to get past them. I just feel like with every car you drive, in the back of your mind is always, is this more fun than the BRZ? <laughs> I'd rather be in my BRZ right now. Yeah, always. This is a very different car. Yeah. I mean, it's... Same color, though. It's more luxurious. It's more refined. It's so much faster. The performance here is just wild. As a manual driving experience, the BRZ is better. But in this class, the Supra is pretty short on competitors. I would take this over the Z, I think. It's just that much better of a car for not that much more money. Yeah. I don't know if I would take this over a SS1 LE. Yeah. But also, I don't know how much longer you're going to be able to get an SS1 I was going to say, in one year you won't have a choice. Yeah. You should get a used one. Yeah, the Mustang will still be around. Still have that option for a performance pack Mustang. But I don't know. I think I'd have this. This chassis is yeah. just amazing. You could daily drive this. It'd be fun, it'd be enjoyable. You could take it out to the track. You can enjoy it on weekends. It's a good road trip car. There's plenty of space in here. I mean, it just... It just hustles. <laughs> Down. It's not too loud in here. It's not too bouncy or bumpy. No. I think it's actually quieter than the Type R. Yeah, it definitely is. I think the biggest thing that sets the Supra apart is that it just feels special. The view over the hood, the way you sit down into this cockpit, the driving position is just perfect. It's as good as the Porsches yes. for half the price. And yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just, I was just going to say they've done such a great job with not overdoing it. It's just it's such a simple interior. Sure, it may feel a little bit dated, but that was one of my impressions on the way here is I'm not, I'm, you're not overwhelmed by anything in the Supra. Sure. There's one so there's one drive mode, sport. You know, well, that's <laughs> yeah. it. You don't, have to, you don't have comfort or track or plus R. It's just like sport. That's it. And everything in here, I would say, is just about right. I don't want all the new BMW screens in no, this interior either. No, no, Absolutely not. I just want to be able to do that. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> it pulls like a freight train. It's so fast, you yeah. guys. <laughs> Yeah, this just devours back roads. I can be 
maybe do with slightly shorter gearing, but I don't know, for the power that this has, it, it also feels about right, too. Yeah, I agree. One thing you can't do with this car is roll down the windows. <laughs> It's actually a pretty easy and cheap fix for that. APR, I think, sells um, a wind deflector that just tapes onto the mirror right here, and yeah. that solves all the wind buffeting solves problems. It. So, yeah. I mean, people, everyone talks about it, but the fix, if you actually own one of these cars, it's like the first thing you buy is the wind deflector, and problem solved. Yeah. You can hear that exhaust, because every mile per hour above 45 is just unbearable buffeting. Yeah, it's, and it's completely unusable. Yeah. I can't we believe Toyota. Finally, yeah. I, I can't believe that made it past. I know. Did, did they just not drive it with the windows down? They must not. But as soon as we got off the highway two days ago, I put the windows down. It was super warm out. Oh. And perfect. then we hit 45 miles per hour. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. You can't, uh, you can't do it. <laughs> so, final thoughts on the manual Supra. What do you think, Chris? I'd have it over I'd, the automatic. I'd have one over the automatic, too, I think. Um, it's not as big of a heck yes as I thought it might be because there are, definitely are some concessions here. Um, but if you want a Supra, you should probably get the manual. Unless if you live in like an area that has a lot of traffic or you don't want to drive manual. But if you want that extra challenge, that extra level of engagement and involvement, and you want kind of... This almost gives me the classic Supra experience with this manual transmission. It has those long, tall gears. It has that wave of power. And you can enjoy the sound of this car a bit more with the manual transmission. The automatic just, it's the best automatic transmission in the world, that ZF8 speed. But it also just feels like every other BMW on the road. Couldn't agree more. And this feels special. Every Supra I've driven, they all kind of have this weird quirk. 
the gauge cluster is never quite bright enough until it is, and then it's fine. Yeah. You've got this physical adjuster here over to the left, but something about the sensors, maybe it's this kind of dark cave-like interior too. Yeah. It always struggles to give you the right or correct amount of brightness. <laughs> you can always see it. You always know what's going on, but your infotainment's always a bit dark. Your gauge yeah. cluster's a bit dark. And I don't know if there's a way to like manually override that in the settings. I don't know if there is. But it's just one of the super quirks that I've noticed. I noticed I could barely see the infotainment screen on the highway, so yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's... But it's something you just learn to live with, and honestly, I don't... a level crossing. I Jeez. don't have a lot of complaints about this car. No, I don't either. Yeah. Well, that'll probably wrap it up. We'll do some more driving today, but I don't know if we'll hit roads as good as that. Easy to start. And this thing's gotten a lot of attention this week too. People love the Supra. Yeah, it definitely makes a statement. I had a guy in a Corvette, a C7 Corvette on the highway drive by, give me a thumbs up. He was like <laughs> smiling and taking pictures and everything. So the Supra still has its charm. It does, yeah. Even no, all these years later. There's a great presence on the road. It's got a great wide stance. It's kind of small and squat and yeah. just, uh, it, looks, it looks special. It really does. looking at the shifter you can kind of tell that it's just a bit tighter in its throws and in its action. to dark. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it definitely makes all the right noises. Approaching a level crossing. Thanks, Jeeves. Thanks, Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Go check out Substitute Topher's YouTube channel at Topher Drives. Yes. That's 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 it for this one. That's it. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. All right. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.